QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Vendors Section. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. So when you select that open windows list, you'll have this item to the to the left showing you which windows are open within QuickBooks within this little gray area. So if I kind of minimize this item within this gray area here, what windows are open, just the home page, then you can maximize the home page within this window. If you go up top and you do not have the home page open, you can go to the company and open up the home page. So now we're going to be taking a look at this flowchart, breaking it down section by section, starting off with the vendor section. And then within each section, we'll then go into the forms within it, or at least the major forms within it. So I'm going to minimize this item to the left to get as much screen space as we can. We're thinking about the vendor section and the flow within it. Now, remember, vendors represent people that we pay. So eventually we're going to be paying something or you can think about it as people we purchase things from. So that's what we get and we're paying uh, something. So at some point in time, cash will be involved in the vendor section. So at some point in time, cash will be decreasing. So at, at some point, then there will be a decrease in cash with regards to the vendor section. So we have two layers of the flow of what will typically happen within the vendor section. So when you think about us buying stuff, purchasing things, having normal expenses, then these are going to be the things that we think about as the normal accounting cycle for the vendor section. Remember that uh, if you work in a larger company, you will typically be working at one basically smaller thing within within that company, meaning you might be working on just the vendor section or just the customer flow or just the employee, employee section and maybe even one component of that point of that thing. So within the vendor section, we have two lines, two streams that we could have in our flow chart. Now, the top, the top stream, the top flow that we can have is only there if we purchase inventory, meaning if we're in a company that, that purchases or has inventory, then we're going to have this purchasing process. However, if we have no inventory, if we're a service company, something like a law firm or like a CPA firm or, or any kind of service industry, then we're not going to have any inventory and we won't have basically this upper flow. So in other words, when we set up the company, as we'll see in the second half of the course, we're going to decide, we're going to tell QuickBooks, are you, are we a company that has inventory or not? If we set up the company to have inventory, we will see this upper flow items dealing with inventory and the tracking of it. If we say we're a service company and we do not have inventory, we will simply have this bottom item uh, with our flow chart down here. It'll be a much more simplified kind of flow than if we have inventory. So thinking about what will happen, then there's two, let's think about this bottom one that will be applicable. This will be applicable whether we have inventory or not. And the typical process will be, if it was a full accrual process, would be that when we have a bill, and let's think about the standard bills that we would pay at the end of the time period, such as uh, the phone bill, the utilities bill, things that we would pay on our personal level as well, we could enter them. The full process would be we enter them into the system as a bill. And when we enter them into the system as a bill, cash is not yet affected, meaning we're going to be increasing the accounts payable, a liability account, meaning we owe the money. And the other side is going to be going to, in this case, the expense when we when we enter the bill. And then we're going to pay the bill at a future point. When we pay the bill, we are then going to be decreasing the cash, writing basically a check. And we're going to be decreasing that liability that we put in place when we enter the bill, which is going to be the accounts payable. Now, you might be saying, hey, look, when I pay the phone bill, the utility bill and whatnot, I don't typically enter the bill first. Why don't I just write a check at that point in time or make some kind of electronic payment at that point in time? You can do that and you can think about that. And, and that would mean that you would skip the first step. That would mean you're more on a cash basis. You would skip, in that case, the accrual account of accounts payable. You have no accrual account. You would just be writing the check when you get the bill. You're not going to enter it as a bill. You're just going to write the check when you get it. Now, of course, you can do that, but it wouldn't be the full accrual process. You can simply write the check. Now, the check is down here. They put it in the banking section. You can still think about it as mainly or usually part of the vendor section, but maybe you write checks for something other than the vendor. In other words, a check is going to be the form for any time that we have a decrease to cash, even if it's not a check, like even if we use an electronic transfer or something like that, we will still use the check form, the format of the check as the form that will be resulting in a decrease to the to a checking account 
So therefore, they put it down here in banking as opposed to in the vendor section because you might write a check, say, to yourself or take money out as a draw, which will we'll use the same kind of check form. So you can think of it mainly when you use a check or a decrease to the checking account, which will be driven by the check form. It'll usually be kind of part of the vendor process, but not necessarily the case. Now, this pay bill form, when we pay it, we will, in essence, make another form that will, in essence, be a check. It'll still be kind of like a check form. Again, we might pay it with something other than a check, but the check form is, is the basic standard kind of layout form that QuickBooks will have when there's going to be a decrease to our cash account to uh, the checking account. So that's going to be the, the general flow that we will have uh, for any kind of business. Now, why would you enter the bills and not just write checks? Many small companies might say, hey, look, why would I enter, you know, why would I enter the bills? Why don't I just write the checks uh, at the, at the, when I get them, I'll just write the checks when I get them. Why go through this added step? Uh, if you're, if you're a larger company or even smaller companies, you may get into the practice of entering the bills for multiple different reasons. If you enter, when you, when you enter the bill, like if you got the phone bill and it says it's due, you know, at the end of the month, if you enter the bill, when you get it, then it's going to record the expense at the point in time that you enter the bill, even though you have not yet paid the cash, which is nice because that actually records the expense closer to the point in time when you consumed the service generally. For example, if you entered the phone bill and you entered the bill when you got the bill, then it's going to record the expense closer to the point in time that you consumed the phone usage related to the bill. And then you can sort that information over here before you pay it so this has a nice feature for you to then pay it as late as possible if for larger companies if you have a whole lot of transactions happening then what you what they try to do for cash management strategy is to pay the bill at the very last point that they possibly can so to do that then this sorting to be able to sort the bills that are in system and then and then pay them at the end of the time period can be useful uh, you can also sort what is going to be due uh, using this method so using the pay bills feature, you can sort what's going to be due. And if you're going to print the checks, then you can actually use this system. It's kind of nice to print them all out of, uh, out, of the same, out of the same system. You can choose all the checks you want to print and then print them at one time. And we'll talk more about that when we do the uh, data input process or analyze these different items uh, one by one when we go into these different items. Now, if you have the inventory, if you actually have inventory, then you're tracking inventory then you, you have to add the, the added feature and we'll talk about this we'll set up the inventory process when we start a new company file but you'll have to add the tracking of inventory now there's different ways you might want to deal with inventory if you have inventory you really want to think about how you want to track the inventory we'll talk more about that when we go through the practice problem but just just uh, note that you want to have an idea of what you're going to be doing with the inventory now the the inventory if you're going to be tracking it within the system and the system is, is going to use a weighted average method. And if you want to use a perpetual inventory system and a weighted average method, then you can, then that's what QuickBooks will allow you to do here. Uh, usually you, you then have this purchase order. So the, the inventory process, and this is usually the process for a large company. If you're a large company, then it's a little bit different than when you buy stuff uh, on your own. If I was to buy something like online from Amazon, for example, uh, then I would have to pay for it at the point in time that I purchased it, even though I have not yet received the goods. So a transaction would happen at that point because I had paid for it at the point in time that I ordered it online from, say, Amazon. So I would have a financial transaction. But if you're a large company, then you may not, uh, you may have the power to be able to say, I would like to request you to send me, in our case, guitars. We're going to sell guitars. I would like you to request 20 guitars for you to send me, not give them a payment, have them actually ship you the guitars. And then once you receive the guitars, you count them, check that they're all good. And then, and then you pay them at that point in time and record the bill. So that's, that's, a, that's not what we normally do on, the, on our personal side. But if you have the ability to do that with your vendors on a company side, then you would use the purchase order. So the purchase order does not actually record a transaction it's a request. It's saying, hey, I would like, I need this inventory. I got 20 guitars. I I'm requesting that you give me that, that, that inventory. Once I get it, then I'll pay you. So if you're able to do that, then you would enter the purchase order here, sending that to the vendor requesting inventory. Then we would imagine, in our case, 20 guitars being received at our warehouse where we got the guitars. Now we would count the guitars, check to see that they line up to the purchase order. 
and then the guitars we can imagine in the box of 20 guitars we would have a bill <laughs> they would bill us an invoice to them or a bill to us and remember that terminology it's a little confusing if we're if if we're the bill for quickbooks means something that some other person gave to us and an invoice means that we uh, gave a bill basically to somebody else so keep those two obviously if i was on the other side of the transaction uh, the invoice that we would send out would be a bill to them right so it might say invoice when we're paying something but it's a bill to us because we're the ones paying it uh, when we enter it into the system so that could be a little bit confusing in terms of the terminology uh, and we have to get used to the QuickBooks terminology because there's accounting terminology and then there's QuickBooks terminology. There's a lot of overlap, of course, but there's some things that will be different. So then we would, we would enter the bill. We're going to say, I would receive the inventory with the bill. Even at this point, I might not be paying it at this point. I'm just entering the bill just as we would down here. But this time I'm entering the bill and also I want to make sure to record the inventory. I can populate this bill, in other words, with the purchase order that I made prior to that. This would record the transaction increasing the inventory of assets. So now we got the inventory. We're not expensing it at that point in time, but rather put it in on the books as an asset. We will expense it later when we consume the inventory by selling it in the form of cost of goods sold. And then we would basically pay the bill and we, we would be back kind of to the normal type of process that we would have. So that's the that's the normal flow for for the vendors, uh, the vendor cycle. So in future presentations, we'll we'll go through each of these forms. Now that you know the kind of flow, what you expect to happen, then you you would know that you're going to be within the vendor cycle flow when you're buying inventory or when you're paying bills, whether you be entering the bills or just writing a check. So you want to be in this cycle, and then you want to know which form that you're going to be using. And so we'll talk about the forms next time and, and which are going to be these items. These are forms for QuickBooks. And then when you enter the form, you want to be able to, to then start to think about what is the effect or impact of that form on the financial statements, the standard financial statements being the balance sheet and the income statement. So every time you enter a transaction just to practice, and that's what we'll do here, we'll, we'll enter the transactions and then we'll jump to the financial statements and see the impact on the financials, the balance sheet and the income statement are the major financial statements. And then we can look at some of the major reports, which are usually subsidiary, some expanded information related to the primary financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. The income statement for QuickBooks also being called profit and loss or P&L for short. The profit and loss report is the income statement report for QuickBooks. It is one of the major financial statements, one of the two major financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement. There's also a statement of cash flow, which is a major financial statement report. But the main two that you're going to be working with all the time is balance sheet, income statement, or P&L, profit and loss.